Hey folks, welcome, welcome back. We're off to a rough start. Let me put it this way. If you want to anger a mechanic, tell him that you have a 2012 Ford Explorer. The air conditioning doesn't work. You need it fixed right away and you have no money. Anyway, it needs a condenser. It also needs a compressor. I think the compressor is a pretty slow leak. We're gonna to try to get by without, without doing that. The condenser is, it's a big job. Six hours by the book. Bumper cover's gotta come off. The whole front of the, the vehicle's gotta get stripped down. I guess let's get to it. I'm not an expert, but that looks bad. Cords hanging out. Bet they won't want to fix that. Set that next to the toolbox where we'll forget it. Though he thought it had a slow leak, I charged it and I put some dye in it. It lasted about, I don't know, 12 hours. So to see the leak, we've got to use our vintage Eric the Car Guy glasses. I'm gonna shine a UV light on the compressor. You should see some glowing greenness in this area. So you gotta be a little bit careful because the, the corrosion, the crystals on the aluminum housing will show up in the, in the UV light, but there should be a brighter line right here between this adapter and the main compressor housing. So there must be a bad O-ring in there. Anyway, I think it's a slow leak. If I remember right, it had a leak there before and it lasted, lasted a whole season. So he doesn't want to replace it. It's a very expensive compressor. 600 bucks, my cost is the cheapest one I found. Uh, he was talking about maybe getting a used one I'm not sure how I feel about that or a reman. I will not install a reman AC compressor. Not if I can help it. Now, the big leak I think is from the condenser. It's really hard to see. I could not see it from the front. This is actually the backside of the radiator. That's the fan shroud right there. And I can see the green dye coming through. So I'm pretty sure the fans have pulled it from the condenser through the radiator. At least I hope so. Be a lot of work for nothing if we're wrong. Pretty tricky for And it's in the coolant bucket. Perfect. Yeah, 
forgot one screw. Anyway, here's the fun part. Broken. That one survived. That one survived. That one survived. Broken. There do they. She doesn't like the camera. It's been sleeping out there for half an hour. All right, folks. Nothing to it. Here is our radiator, charge air cooler, condenser, and oil cooler. Yes, sir. It appears we made the right call. Nice big wet spot on the back side there. Here we go, folks. Straight from the industrial powerhouse of Cambodia. It's not the best but it is the cheapest. 
Looks like we're going to have to do a little bit of straightening on these brackets. I've already done a bit of filing on this connection. It did not come with new O-rings or gaskets, which they never do, and I don't understand why. So I have obtained those. Let's put it in. I'm sure it'll be fine. Here's a little tip. When you drain your coolant, you always end up with a bunch of dirt and bugs and crud in it. And I vacuum filled the cooling system and it pulls it through a strainer. But I got a little bit left over. So to filter that out, I use these paint funnels. You can get these anywhere that they sell paint. And if you hold your mouth just right, Voila. I don't see any more pieces. 
So I guess that means we're done. Oh, it's not too bad, folks. Don't listen to me belly aching. Uh, they could have made it easier, but this job is plenty doable. You know, pulling the bumper cover off, it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, I'm gonna take it out, run it for a bit, warm it up, make sure the coolant level is good. We'll pour some water on it, flush that coolant off. Gotta check the oil because the, the oil cooler is actually built into the condenser. This is kind of a weird condenser. So it's a two layer condenser. There's like a front and a back connected by this bridge tube. But then the bottom, I don't know, one, two, three, four, let's say six tubes are actually the oil cooler for the engine. So it's kind of a weird setup. Feels pretty good. Oh yeah. No news is good news, folks. At least in this business. The Explorer's been gone for probably about a week and I haven't gotten any angry phone calls. So we're gonna call that a win. I'm not sure where we're headed with the future of air conditioning repair, if I'm being honest. It's always been a pretty good money maker for shops. You know, people won't live without it. It's pretty difficult to do DIY, but if you have the tools, most repairs are pretty straightforward. The problem is the prices have just gone insane. I mean, prices on everything have gone insane, but the AC stuff is just absolutely bonkers. You know, two years ago, a 30 pound can of R134 was $89. A year ago, it was $99. Today, it's almost $300. And the same thing for condensers and compressors and evaporators and hoses. If you can even get them, they're 50 to 200% more expensive than they were a year ago. Yeah, I don't know. Might be good for us, I guess, because it seems like people just will not go without air conditioning. If you're on the receiving end of that, be prepared to pay a lot more to get your AC fixed. The contractor who did the roof on my shop, he told me it cost him $1,200 at the dealership to have one of his trucks leak tested and recharged. Now, I'm assuming that was the new 1234YF refrigerant, but that was no repairs. That was just a leak test and no leak found and the system recharged, 1,200 bucks. That's crazy, like absolutely crazy. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comment box, and I'll see you next time.